to introduce our new commissioner, um, Leah Fitz. Yeah, Lee. Lee. Yeah. Lee Fitz, and um, we welcome you and thank you for your time. Also, commissioners, thank you for your time. Um, as we know, this is all our public service, so and staff, thank you for, for work as well. For each case, there will be a public hearing. We ask that the applicant keep their presentation to under 10 minutes. They may reserve two minutes as a rebuttal. We ask that the public keep their comments to two minutes unless they have previously requested in writing for five minutes as a representative of a group or organization. Pursuant to the provision of section 2.68.030 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws, notice is hereby given that a final hearing before this commission is appealable to the Chancery Court of Davidson County or the Circuit Court of Davidson County, vis a statutory writ of certiorari. You are advised to seek your own independent legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements are met. You should also seek independent legal advice regarding the applicability of the writ of certiorari and the specific decision of the Historic Zoning Commission. <clears throat> on the consent agenda, items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the Commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the Commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. Uh, Robin, do we have revisions to the agenda today? We do. 2819 Hillside has asked to come off consent. So usually when, when you do that, you put them at the end of the agenda. Okay. And there's been requests to defer 2020 10th Avenue South and 2517 Blair Boulevard until next month. Okay. With those revisions and edits, is there a motion to adopt the agenda for today? There's so move. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? None opposed. So we do adopt the agenda. Are there any council members here this afternoon? There are not. And then we go to approval of the minutes of December 19, 2018. Is there a motion to approve? Madam Chairman, I move for approval. There is a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? None opposed. So we have approved the minutes. <clears throat> All right. You ready for consent then? Yes. Okay, so on consent today, we have 3604 Richland Avenue, new construction of an addition and outbuilding, 3534 Richland Avenue, new construction of an infill. This is a revision from last month. Uh, Hillside has come off consent. 418 Fairfax Avenue, new construction. It's an addition to an outbuilding with a setback determination. Staff recommends approval of the items on the consent agenda with the applicable conditions, finding the applications to meet the design guidelines of the respective overlays. Any questions to Jenny? Okay. We will open public hearing. Is there anyone here to speak? If not, we will close public hearing. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I so move. There's a motion. Is there a second? second? There's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None opposed. So we have passed this consent agenda. There's no overlay recommendations, no deferred items, no SPs, no violations. So we are go to the uh, projects of today. Good afternoon. 1011 South Douglas Avenue is an application for a addition to the rear of this contributing building in Waverly, Belmont. Um, the application does include some changes to the existing structure, which I'll go over uh, first. Uh, first is this barrel vaulted uh, roof in the, the front elevation there, um, which uh, has propo been proposed to be removed and replaced in the plane with the uh, with the front roof there, um, the historic photograph from 1969 is of no help here. So, um, staff has asked that the applicant verify whether that's uh, an original feature of the house. 
uh, either through uh, pictures, if there are any, or construction evidence prior to removing that. There are window and door openings on both sides that are proposed to be altered on this side, the right side, the rear half of the house there, basically to the rear of the, um, of the gable. Uh, that was originally an open porch, um, so staff finds that these window uh, changes are appropriate on that side. On the building's left side, um, the door uh, is proposed to be moved to the location here from, the, from farther to the rear to about the midpoint. Uh, two new windows added, again, to the rear of that side. Uh, the commission has not, in general, approved um, changes of window openings toward the front uh, of an historic building, uh, so that staff's recommendation is that those two window sets forward of the midpoint, that those be uh, maintained instead of changed uh, with this elevation. The addition, the new construction will add 1,417 square feet to the same existing footprint uh, of the house. The addition sets in appropriately on each side and then opens up to match the width uh, of the, the historic home. Uh, so the height scale, materials, location, removability meet those respective sections of the design guidelines. Um, the elevations are labeled alley side and neighbor side is why these are uh, labeled so on the, the screen. The additions design is a mirror image basically of the existing home. Um, the form of it um, includes compatible roof forms, but uh, as designed, it creates the look uh, of a house behind a house. Um, the design guidelines and the Secretary of the Interior Standards require that new work be differentiated from the historic work, uh, and staff's review is that that is not the case um, as drawn. So staff's recommendation is that the additions form be revised to meet those requirements. Dormers um, are uh, proposed both for the historic um, uh, historic home and the addition. Um, the dormers as drawn are wider than is normally seen historically, uh, and they also uh, don't include as much glazing as the commission has required in the past. Um, in this case, there is only one small dormer at the front of the house to help guide the design of new dormers. So uh, staff's recommendation is that any dormers added to the historic part of the house not exceed the width of the paired windows in the gable field to the right, and that the, uh, as is normal for dormers, that the ridge is set at least two feet below the ridge of the house, that the, uh, the wall of the dormer, the uh, side wall, is at least two feet up, and that the dormers be fully glazed, uh, as is required for most dormers added to an existing historic building. Staff also recommends that there be no more than two dormers per side. On the addition, um, the commission has allowed in the past for larger dormers uh, on an addition in the past. The shed roof uh, form is, is um, appropriate in this case, but staff does recommend increasing the amount of windows there um, or breaking that also into two dormers um, of an appropriate size. On the neighbor side, the, um, the dormers uh, include this projection uh, that is not something uh, seen historically. It's, um, staff finds that this is out of proportion and also needs to be glazed. Uh, so staff's recommendation on that dormer is that uh, it be traditionally scaled and glazed as is appropriate. In conclusion, staff recommends approval with the conditions that the addition's form is redesigned so as not to be a duplicate of the existing house and not appear as a house attached to the rear of a house, that the dormers added to the historic portion of the house not exceed the width of the paired windows in the gable field, the pitch of the gable dormer roof match the pitch of the house, the ridge of the dormer be at least two feet below the ridge, and the side of the dormer be at least two feet from the, uh, the valley, uh, and that the dormers are fully glazed that the number of dormers on the historic house added to the historic portion should not exceed more than two, that the addition's uh, left side dormer be fully glazed or broken up into two dormers, and the right side dormer be a dormer uh, or dormers traditionally scaled 
and glazed. Uh, five is the uh, condition on the front porch roof uh, that the applicant uh, provide evidence that that feature is not original to the house prior to removing it. The existing windows, uh, window openings forward of the midpoint on the left side not be altered uh, and that staff approved roof color, masonry, windows and doors and um, that the HVAC and other utilities located uh, to provide minimal visibility. That concludes my presentation. Thank you, Paul. Any questions for him at the moment? Uh, so, Paul, on condition number two for the width of the dormer, it references the two windows that are there. It says the width of the dormer shall not exceed the width of those windows, including trim. Uh, does, that, does that mean that they can, in essence, take windows the same size, put them in the dormer, and then have the walls around that? Or does the width of the dormer have to, including the walls, not be wider than those two windows? I think... Uh, it's been the paired window with the trim has been the, the width that we've used as a guide previously. And I'll, I'll add to that. Obviously, this is not a hard and fast rule. If it's a little bit bigger, I mean, that's fine. But typically, historic dormers were the width of openings below. Um, and obviously, you've allowed for much larger dormers on additions, but these are dormers being attached to the historic house. And that's, we just had a concern with with the width of those. Uh, and I guess typically what I've seen is the window size is the same as the, you know, so you'd, you'd have windows that would match the size of the paired windows there. And I was just trying to make sure that the dormer was adequately sized to be able to hold the paired windows mm -hmm. that match the other windows. So. so. Okay. And the applicant is here if you have questions for them. Thank you. Applicant? Good afternoon, Commission. My name is Randy Morgan. I live at 1203 Kirkwood Avenue. I'm the uh, owner and builder for this project. Um, we have been working with Paul. First of all, I'd like to give him kudos. Great guy to work with. Uh, very easy. My architect is also in the neighborhood. Uh, so we look forward to uh, creating a project that adds to the overall uh, context of the neighborhood in a way that we can add a little bit of density and be sensitive to those things. So uh, we've reviewed Paul's comments. We've already made uh, a majority of those changes. I think they're fair and reasonable and, uh, you know, we don't feel like we would have any problem assuming the commission approves uh, this measure to work with Paul to, to, to generate uh, a set of plans that we can all be happy with. Good plan. Are Thank there any uh, questions for me? Any questions for the applicant? Okay, we thank you for working with the staff. Open public hearing. Anyone to speak on this project? If not, we will close public hearing. Discussion with the commission or a motion. Uh, Madam Chairman, I uh, move that we, uh, with respect to 1011 South Douglas Avenue, we approve the project uh, with the staff conditions. There's a motion. Second. There's a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, any opposed? None opposed. You have a comment, sir? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Didn't yes. mean to cut you off. I was, I was going to point out um, with, with respect to item one that it is, in fact, um, a residence behind a residence. And so I, that, that comment is, um, I don't know, it's, it's, I'm not arguing that it's a correct comment, I, but I, I, I guess I wanted to state the obvious that. that the applicant's desire is to increase the density um, and go from one to two on the lot, which I think by base zoning is, is not, you know, is, is sort of by right that that's happening. Um, it seems odd to deny deny what something is in in, uh, in comments, but I I I, I think that uh, the applicant's certainly willing and the architect capable of, of doing something that would meet uh, meet the intent of the of the comments there. Sure. Good comment. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. The next item on the agenda um, is uh, 3601 Richland Avenue. The house located at 3601 Richland Avenue was constructed circa 1915. 
um, and contributes to the character of the Richland Weston neighborhood. Uh, the request is for a rear addition um, that includes an attached garage. The project also um, includes requests for two setback determinations. Uh, for one, to reduce the rear setback from 20 feet to three feet, and another to reduce the left side setback, which is along Bowling Avenue, from 20 feet to eight feet. Um, the proposed addition is located at the rear. It's set in appropriately from the rear corners of the historic house, and it does not extend wider than the historic house. Uh, the applicant has requested um, the setback term determinations for both the left side, which is along Bowling Avenue, and the rear setbacks. The site is a corner lot, um, and the house is currently located eight feet from the side property line along Bowling Avenue, um, while the, the bulk standards in zoning typically requires a 10-foot side setback on a side street. Um, however, this increases to a 20-foot um, setback requirement in cases where garage doors face the side street, as is proposed here. Um, Staff finds that the requested side setback determination along Bowling Street on the left side uh, to be appropriate as the addition is no wider and will be no closer to the side property line uh, than the historic house. So for the other setback determination request, um, it's for the, the rear. Um, the house is currently located 27 feet from the rear property line. Uh, with the minimum rear setback requirement of 20 feet, this leaves the buildable area for an addition um, down to seven feet. Um, the applicant proposes an addition that extends back 24 feet, so this would leave a three foot rear setback from the rear property line. Um, staff finds that reducing the rear setback uh, here could be appropriate, um, but is concerned uh, with the amount of reduction uh, that's been requested. Um, for a lot, in this case, with no rear alley. Uh, in the past, there have been situations in which the commission has reduced the rear setback, but that's been to as little as five feet. Um, and, and again, this is for a primary structure. Um, so in this case, the property backs up to the front half of a property that faces Bowling Avenue. Um, you can see here 133 Bowling Avenue. Because of the deep setback of 133 Bowling Avenue, staff is concerned that encroaching too far into that required 20-foot rear setback um, could negatively impact the adjoining property owner. Uh, the bulk standards do permit uh, a three-foot rear setback for accessory structures, as long as the foot, but footprint does not exceed 700 square feet. But in this case, they're proposing a three-foot rear setback for a primary structure with uh, a footprint of approximately 1,800 square feet. So in addition, in this case, they're also requesting a side setback determination along the side street. Uh, so for these reasons, staff, um, does not recommend that the rear setback be reduced to any less than five feet. So moving on to the addition. Um, the proposed addition ties in um, two feet below the ridge of the historic house and includes an attached garage um, on the left side of the addition. The design guidelines allow for attached garages in cases where they're located at basement level. Um, However, while the proposed garage is not at basement level in this case, staff finds that it could be appropriate um, for this property because of the, um, the depth of the lot um, in conjunction with the deep front setback. Um, so while the, the deep front setback, um, which is the house is located about 70 feet from behind the front property line, while it's consistent with other homes in that area, the lot is uh, truncated, so it's a about 124 feet deep, while most lots in this area are about 200 feet deep. Uh, so consequently, the existing house is only 27 feet from the rear, so staff finds that incorporating an attached garage um, would not result, especially with this design, in an inappropriate um, massing for the addition. Uh, so for these reasons, staff finds that the proposed design with the attached garage um, could, could be appropriate in this case. And here is the right side elevation as proposed. The addition will be clad in smooth cement fiberboard siding uh, with a five inch reveal and the proposed rear elevation. So in conclusion, staff would recommend approval of the project with three conditions. The first that the rear setback um, be increased to at least five feet. 
Um, two, staff approve the final details, dimensions, and materials of the foundation, roof color, windows, doors, and garage doors prior to purchase and installation. And three, if relocated, the HVAC shall be located uh, behind the house or on either side beyond the midpoint of the house. Uh, so with these conditions, staff would find that the proposed addition um, and requested setback determinations meet the, the Richland West End guidelines. Thank you, Melissa. Any questions? I have, I have a couple, Melissa, and I, I think they begin to get into some specifics of <laughs> um, just location, a lot of things you brought up in the analysis, okay. uh, none of which I disagree with, uh, although in looking at the plat for um, this project that you've got a, I don't know if it's technically non-conforming by zoning, but it's certainly smaller than the surrounding lots. You, you, it's almost like you've got, you've got two there and then it turns a corner and then there's a, right. a third lot that has a much deeper setback than any of the adjacent buildings and would tip that you typically see the typology in the neighborhood and it's it seems that almost a, a side setback I guess if you will was that I know you've given we've given a lot because of the special conditions here was that given any consideration in the analysis of this or well I think so I mean we um, staff is recommending approval of a rear setback determination of of five feet. I sure. think we were just uncomfortable going down to as little as three, especially considering there's no alley here to provide an additional um, buffer to the adjacent property. Mm -hmm. I, so yeah, I think we did, we definitely took that in. Given some difference. I, the, the, in looking at, and I know we don't look at necessarily at plan specifics on this, but uh, in a two car <laughs> garage with a 20 foot width, <laughs> Um, you know, we, we've got the hyphen, which we would certainly want to have um, to differentiate the, the addition from the original house. And then a 20-foot garage, which is by no means, it's pretty common, pretty spacious. I'm, I'm just, the applicant certainly can speak to this. Where that might come from would, would certainly um, have some impact. It, it, they're not just giving up square footage, I guess, and we'll, we'll let the, the applicant comment on that one. But that one mm -hmm. might be something for us to consider in the very particular specifics of this um, application and these site constraints in terms of the conditions and, and is three feet appropriate, is five feet enough, right. um, certainly. Thank you. The adjacent house, uh, if you go back to that, um, that shows the plan. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Do you know that setback off the property line, the rear house, property line? Uh, oh, um, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the house on bowling? To the um, left, I guess you'd say, of, no. um, of the pink. No, we didn't look at that, but actually what is showing there, I believe is, even though it looks attached, um, when I did look at the aerials, it, it's actually an attached, sorry, a detached garage, I believe. So it would be a different ball game as far as setbacks. Uh, was any comment received from this owner at 133? No, we have received no comment. Okay, let's right. listen to the applicant first and then we'll have discussion. Good afternoon, commissioners. I'm Van Pond, 2929 Sidco Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 37204. I had to think about that for a minute. Um, I really appreciate the staff's uh, help on this and discussions as we've kind of worked through this with our owner. It's a really unusual lot. It's um, depth-wise very constricted. We're not really sure what the whole pattern of development was around it. I was just talking with Melissa, and the house at 133 Bowling predates this house. So somehow the Richland Land Company did some really funky things for us. Um, a couple of things just to uh, give some more background beyond just the setback request, which is really what we're here to talk about. We did go on uh, the recommendation of staff about six months ago and talked to Public Works about the side-facing garage and backing into Bowling Avenue, and their comments to us were, so long as it didn't protrude further than the face of the existing house, they would be okay with that. Uh, just so there's there's been some background done. I think I worked with Sean a little bit and then Melissa a little bit more. Uh, Melissa did the staff recommendation. I worked with Sean initially. Um, so the 
house to the right of this house on Richland, on Richland Avenue that is a detached garage. It's awfully close to the house, and it's, it's, if it's not on the property line, it's inches away um, that abuts 133 Bowling. Um, we're asking for a three-foot setback because obviously this is a very tight lot and trying to kind of work a reasonable addition and, and plan around this is, is difficult at best. Um, we do feel like a three-foot setback would not encroach any more than the existing adjacent garage does already, and we're already further away as we move toward Bowling Avenue. Um, so we're asking for your consideration on that because the lot doesn't fit the pattern of Richland as far as depth goes. If we had a 200-foot lot, we would not even be having this discussion, <laughs> uh, but we don't, um, and that is that is the basis for this. That's the hardship we have. Um, we appreciate the input, and we look forward to hearing from you. If you have any questions, I'm glad to answer them. Then does um, the dormer that faces this rear side, depending on your perspective, uh, property line, it sets in from, it appears in the drawings, it sets in. It sets in two feet. Two feet, so that would be, the upper part would be five feet. Further recessed um, Then, then kind of got a roof line and a gable, or uh, a <coughs> um, meat line. Great, thank you for clarifying that. Anything else for Mr. Pond? Okay, Thanks just very much. a moment, thank you. Open public hearing. Close public hearing. Discussions, Commissioner. Um, I'd like to commend Mr. Pond on what I think is a very nice design for this challenging lot. I think considering the, the challenges here and the precedent set by the, the small one-story garage next door and the fact that the set Back, uh, the setback will be approaching what's essentially a very large front yard at, at 133 Bowling. I don't really have any issues with um, granting the, the termination that they're asking for. I don't see it really encroaching on a building. It's encroaching on the yard. So I think given the challenges of the lot, my inclination is to is to give them the approval that they're asking for. Commissioner Price, I, I agree with that analysis. I think considering uh, if we were talking about a three-car garage or something that was out of scale with a house, I, I would have less quarter, I guess, to, to give. But it, it's a reasonable addition. Um, the width of 20 feet on a garage with today's automobiles is, is not if there were 22, I think coming down to 20, something less than that would, would uh, be challenging to open the doors, I think, once you got into the garage. And so Commissioner Price's comments and the constraints that this um, particular property has, uh, I don't think under normal circumstances we, that less than five would be appropriate, but with all those things considered um, with respect to this, the, the rear setback determination, I, I agree with Commissioner Price. And I won't repeat, I feel, uh, echo both of them. So I'd like to make a motion that we um, approve um, 3601 Richland Avenue um, with staff recommendations except on um, <coughs> recommendation one that that be changed to from five feet to three feet. There's a motion. Second. There's a second. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None opposed? So the motion carries. Madam Chair, for the record, I would also like to sure. add that the dormer is set back the additional two feet, so that encroachment on the rear property was taken into account, and certainly my my opinion of it as an application, and just for any future cases that might sure. put, put this one up as, a, as an example of what they may want to do. Yes, duly noted. All right, ready for the next one? All right, so the next application is for infill at 2116 19th Avenue South. Um, so the site, a permit was issued in November 2018 to demolish the non-contributing 1950s house that was located on the site, and it has since been demolished. Uh, the plan before you meets the design guidelines for height, scale, setbacks, and rhythm of spacing, materials, roof shape, and orientation. 
As proposed, the infill is oriented to 19th Avenue South um, and meets all setbacks. Um, the site plan shows a footprint of an outbuilding um, where you, the Bay of Gredex is, um, but that's not included with this application since um, detailed plans were not received for that. Um, and parking will be from the alley. So as proposed, the structure is two stories with a maximum height of 33 feet measured from grade to ridge. Um, the overall height is similar to nearby historic homes as well as some recently approved infill. Uh, here is the left side elevation. The house will be primarily clad in brick with um, some uh, siding as secondary material. And there's the right side elevation and the rear. Um, here are some context photos. So on the left, we have 2114 19th Avenue South, uh, which is um, to the left of the site. It was a recent infill uh, that was approved by the commission. And the photo on the right is 2112 19th Avenue South, which I believe is two houses down, uh, which is contributing, uh, two houses down to the left. Um, and here are some additional photos. Um, on the left, we have a 2113 19th Avenue South, which is across the street. Um, and then the photo on the right is includes 2119 and 2117 19th Avenue South. Um, actually, all three of these homes are across the street and are all contributing. Uh, so in conclusion, staff recommends approval with the following conditions. Uh, one, that the finished floor height be consistent with that of uh, adjacent historic homes to be verified in the field by MHCC staff. Two, the front setback be consistent with buildings to either side to be verified by, by staff in the field. Three, the HVAC be located at the rear of the home or on the side, on one of the sides beyond the midpoint. And then four, that staff review all material selections, including a brick sample prior to purchase and installation. So with these conditions, staff recommends approval, finding that the infill meets uh, the Belmont Hillsboro guidelines. Thank you, Melissa. Questions to Melissa. Melissa, on the rear elevation, maybe I'm just not reading these drawings right. This, the tallest part of the house has a, a shingles on it. Mm -hmm. But in the elevation, it looks like it's sort of just like a hard, as those shingles on the vertical plane, it looks like there's just a hard stop on the side elevations. Um, that, uh, it's, I'm not sure I'm following. This is the rear, right? So, it looks like so this is the rear. Which side is? Um, yeah, I, I'm looking at the. Uh, is it a cut? On the left, no? left oh. elevation and the right elevation. On the, on the far side of the page, so that'd be the right side of the page. There's a. Left elevation. Yeah, the le it, it looks like there's a gable that faces that way. But if you look at the rear elevation, there's shingles on that upper part. Perhaps the applicant can yeah. explain. I'm, I'm just curious. There's, it's. The it's um, I'm not sure if they're here. It's hipped in the front, and, and it looks like an open gable in the back, but the elevation, maybe I'm just not reading it right, doesn't, doesn't appear to reflect that's what's happening in the Okay. That, that's something we can definitely check on prior to issuing the preservation permit. Okay. I, I know it's at the rear of the building. I, I just was curious if there's, if I'm, in fact, <laughs> just not paying close enough attention. Applicant. Can the applicant come forward, please? Is one here? I don't believe there. Do you have any questions? Okay. All right. Anyone else have a question for Melissa? All right. Is the applicant here? Don't believe Okay. So. Applicant is not here. <laughs> okay. Open uh, public hearing. Close public hearing. Commissioners? Well, I will say what Ben said, though. If it is uh, shingles on a flat surface. Yeah, that's not, that's not cool. Yeah. I, 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 it's not drawn. I mean, I, I agree. I think you, we should make them just a note that yeah. that needs to be. Um, we're, we're, we're yeah. All right, we can do that. Okay. Well, someone did. We just made that motion, right? Uh, I don't know that there was a motion. But okay. We, Would you like to make that motion and include that comment? Yeah. 
I'll make a motion with respect to um, 2116 19th Avenue South to approve with um, the staff conditions and additionally that the applicant um, verify the accuracy of the elevations left and right and the rear as as submitted as they don't they don't seem to to jazz with each other and that the staff um, upon verification of those would would further review if you know if that were if that were necessary and, and, and provide comment to the applicant if, if for some reason the massing or, or the scale of it seems out of uh, out of whack and, and not uh, meeting the, the design guidelines. So that's a lot of motion, but there it is. I second that a lot of motion. Okay. <laughs> there was a second. Let me just make sure staff is clear. Uh, Robin, are we good? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Is um, the motion is uh, all in favor? Madam Chair, did we open the public hearing on this one? Okay. Thank you so much. We, no, you did. I think you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I know we had so much discussion that now. <laughs> yeah, no, you did. You did. Okay. Um, all right. Yes, there's a motion. All in favor? Aye. Yes, none opposed. So the motion passes. Thank you. Next up is 1328 3rd Avenue North. Um, the existing structure on the site is a circa 1940s frame structure that was formerly used as a church. It is located at the corner of 3rd Avenue North and Taylor Street. Um, and just so you know, that is outside of the National Register District for Germantown, so it's in the Germantown Preservation Overlay, but not in the National Register District. When the Germantown neighborhood was resurveyed in 2016, this structure was deemed to be non-contributing. MHCC staff has issued an administrative permit for its demolition. The application before you today is to construct a four-unit residential infill. I'm going to first show some context photos. Um, the first photo at the top there, you can see the building that will be demolished um, on the right and then across the street as a one-story residential historic structure. Um, down Taylor Street, moving towards uh, 2nd Avenue North, there is under construction currently three-story townhouse development. And then um, looking on the same side of 3rd Avenue North, kind of towards downtown, um, you can see that the block has a mixture of one and a half, one-story resident, residential structures. Uh, the fire station is further down, it's about one and a half story. There's a two-story infill. Um, and further down the block are larger resident um, apartment structures. And catty corner from the site, directly catty corner, is um, a four-story apartment complex that the commission approved, I think, in 2014. Um, and then the bottom photo is looking, again, south towards downtown, showing the other side of the street where there's one-story residential structures and a four-story, three- to four-story apartment building. So that's just all to show that the context here is very varied. <laughs> um, and also just a reminder that in Germantown, unlike some of our other districts, um, Infill is allowed to be up to 35 feet in height and two stories in this location, kind of no matter the context. Um, here is the site plan um, at 3rd Avenue and Taylor Street. So you can see they're getting four residential units in the in the structure, and they will be providing parking for six cars, all the access via the alley. Um, those parking spaces are located at the basement level. Um, so the lot next door to this one is vacant. Looking at the front setback, you can see that the front of the house is sitting, or the new infrastructure was sitting fairly close to the sidewalk. It's just five feet off the property line. Um, looking at the context for front setbacks, um, the lot just to the south has a non-contributing garage at the back of the lot and nothing at the front. And then you can see that a lot of the one-story residential structures sit fairly close to the, to the street and then the large apartment complex Caddy corner um, sits pretty much on the property line. So that's all just to say again, front setbacks are very varied. And so staff found that the five foot setback sitting, sitting so close to the street um, was appropriate in this instance. 
here are the facades for the Third Avenue North, which is at the top, and the Taylor Street facades. The infill will be two stories with a maximum height of 34 feet 5 inches from grade at the front. The lot does slope down towards the rear, allowing for a raised basement in sections of the development. In the immediate vicinity, there is a mixture of older one-story homes and newer four-story apartment complexes. And again, the Germantown design guidelines allow for new infill to be two stories and up to 35 feet in height, so staff therefore finds that the height and scale meet the um, design guidelines. The main portion of the house is oriented towards 3rd Avenue North. The front facade contains two identical side-by-side -side entries behind a shallow stoop. Staff finds this to be appropriate. On Taylor Street, the two additional entries lead to two other residential units. These are also behind small stoops and are appropriate for this type of, um, we call it a plex type, so it's not a duplex, but it's a quadplex, I guess, development is what the, um, the design guidelines refer to this as a plex type development. So. Here is the right elevation, so this is kind of the interior court elevation. The design guidelines for Germantown do require that new infill be at least 80% brick. You can see these two facades do meet that 80% brick. Um, the interior does not, but the design guidelines also allow for less visible or non-visible facades to have more non-brick material and staff that found that because this facade doesn't face the street and won't be highly visible, um, you can see a lot of it's actually kind of interior in the court, um, the lap siding parts, staff found that to be appropriate, um, the materials to be appropriate. Three of the four, um, the, the project does have four um, rooftop decks, um, which can be appropriate in this part of Germantown. Three of the four rooftop decks are located on the interior court of the structure and will not be highly visible from the street. Those are marked here. Um, however, there's a rooftop deck facing Taylor Street that extends up to the edge of the building. The design guidelines state that rooftop decks should, quote, sit back a minimum of five feet from the side street facing wall in the case of corner buildings. So staff therefore recommends that this rooftop deck be set back five feet from the edge of the third avenue north wall and finally here are the two rear elevations in conclusion staff is recommending approval of the project with these conditions that uh, the finished floor height be consistent with the finished floor heights of the neighboring historic houses the rooftop deck facing taylor street be set back five feet from the taylor street wall staff approve the final details and dimensions of windows and doors we approve all brick pavers uh, brick and paver samples the roof shingle color the material the stoop steps and landings and the location of the hvac units with these conditions staff finds that the proposed infill meets section three of the design guidelines for germantown the applicant is here i'm happy to answer any questions though i have a question sure. um under the germantown historic preservation is there any guidelines on how sidewalks in front of developments are like you can see how there's brick sidewalks in sure. this you know most of the area in germantown they is. are showing brick um, sidewalks on both third avenue north and um, taylor street Robin, you may be able to answer this, but I don't remember exactly what they say, but there's also the new design, new guidelines that are, have nothing mm -hmm. to do with us for sidewalks across Metro. That is another process that they'll have to go through. Um, but I mean, we found that, I, I think right now, there, you might be able to answer this, but I'm not sure if, the, well, we can look at the pictures. It's the Taylor Street has brick pavers right now. It looks right. like they end um, at the corner and the applicant's showing that wrapping the block and we'd be, I think I think the design guidelines do state that where there are brick sidewalks, they should be okay. retained. Um, I think I, that's where I was going. Whether yeah. the the guidelines actually had a specific uh, requirement on that, I believe so, but I'd have to double check. So. Okay. Yeah. Just in terms of materials, so the, you know there may be an issue with the the width of the sidewalk. That's not our issue. Um, they'll go to BZA if they need to to keep what they have. Uh, it's not something you'll deal with. You only deal with the material, and they are showing brick. Okay. I have a question about um, the setback on the larger um, street-facing rooftop <coughs> deck, if you will. Sure. Um, and, and I know it's not staff's job to design projects for the applicant. Um, this one seems a little curious in that how would – um, I'm wondering if the project will be improved or perhaps not improved if uh, what's acting sort of as a hyphen between two buildings in form is sort of has this brick facade and then there's something that's behind it to sort of meet a 
arbitrary five foot, what, what, what could appear architecturally as an arbitrary five foot setback. I don't know the guidelines speak to how you accomplish that. Right. Is five feet like you throw up a railing and they can't use that five feet of roof there? Or is it literally that we're gonna take the front facade of the building and, and push it back five feet? I, I doubt the applicant would be willing to give five feet for the whole that whole hyphen maybe they will but i i was curious what the outcome of, of my, my interpretation of the design guidelines for that was that not that we would require that parapet wall to be moved back five feet but that the interior space that's used as a the decked portion the deck portion so looking at it, you know i don't think the elevation would, would change not unless the architect wants that. to changes it um that the, in the but the plan would change you could see the rooftop deck doesn't start until five feet back fair enough thank you Okay, applicant. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'm Brian Hahn with Allard Wood Architects, 1618 16th Avenue South. Um, in, in regards to the sidewalk, we we do have, I think, an eight foot brick sidewalk along third. Um, we're actually the architects for the project behind that too, along Taylor Street. And what we have done there is, a, I believe, is a four-foot um, planning strip, a grass strip, and then five-foot sidewalk. So we would match. We would end up matching that um, along Taylor Street. So, and I think that's my uh, understanding in, in terms of the roof deck as well. As, as we would have a railing, we would set that back. We had that discussion, I think, in several of our meetings. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I would just like to thank the staff for working with us. We've probably brought this property in front of Melissa and, and staff probably three or four months ago. Um, so I want to thank them for just constantly looking at all of our ideas, trying to trying to get this to work, um, and, and working with their suggestions and and whatnot. So um, I'm happy to answer any. Any questions? So you are good with all the recommendations? Yes. Okay, very good. Thank you for working with the staff as well. Uh, open public hearing. Closed public hearing. <laughs> Mr. Mosley, I've closed public hearing now. Okay. <laughs> I am as well. Um, commissioners, discussion or a motion? With respect to 1328 3rd Avenue North, I move that we um, uh, accept the proposal with staff recommendations. There's a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. None opposed. The motion passes. Thank you. Thanks. So we have one more, which is 2819 mm -hmm. Hillside. While she's bringing that up, I'll just introduce uh, 2819 Hillside is a redesign of an info project in Hillsborough West End um, that was uh, that was approved in 2014. Uh, can they see this? Oh. If you give me a sure. minute, I can put it on there. Sorry. We're trying to bring it up so we, so we can we can show you all the um, all the uh, um, the the conditions and the the images. Um, I don't really need to belabor things. Um, the the redesign meets the design guidelines. Um, we're talking about it because uh, Dr. Bowdenbacher um, wants to address the uh, the finished floor height and the foundation um, the the conditions. 
um, on the, the finished floor height, that that be consistent with the adjacent floor heights. Now, in this case, the foundation was built in 2016, um, and the, the outbuilding and the, the foundation were, were poured, um, so it wasn't our intent to uh, to have the applicant reconfigure the, the foundation, which, which was approved. Um, and is consistent with other floor heights, but he asked to address that one. And it's been a standard condition previously that foundation uh, masonry be a different material or a different color. I think that was a condition um, here uh, five years ago that was, that was discussed. Um, the other conditions are standard ones on um, four to six inch mullions between windows uh, and staff approval of roof color, masonry, windows and doors, um, and porch materials. Um, so that's really what we're, we're here to, um, to discuss. Um, but I wanted to bring up the, the staff recommendation for, for viewing at least. Did you have any questions of Paul? Okay. I don't. Let's um, have the applicant um, come forward, please. We'll, we'll keep working on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I first of all like to thank the Historic Commission and Paul for their work with me on this, this project. I know it's been uh, dragged out in time. Uh, this is, as Paul mentioned, it's just a redesign of the roof uh, to be more of a gable roof than a deconstructed uh, roof. And uh, I'm sorry, could you give your name and address? I'm sorry. Okay, sorry. My name is uh, Franz Bodenbacher. I live at 2510 Blair Boulevard uh, in Nashville. So I live in the neighborhood and I'm uh, the owner and, and builder of this uh, the property. The property is uh, on a very challenging lot in terms that it's very steep. Uh, it's actually at the top of the hill and both lots are sloping down. And when we originally had this project approved, uh, we had put the elevations and everything on the plans. And we had constructed the foundation, the basement slab and the retaining wall and had everything communicated to historic. So the only concern I'm having here is that uh, when we had this reapproval that staff recommended that the finished floor height shall be consistent with finished floor heights of the adjacent historic houses to be verified by staff in the field. Uh, at the moment, the way everything is outlined and constructed, there is no way that we can revise the floor heights the basement floor height was given by the original basement height of the building. And then we had the elevation in the front approved where now essentially the first floor height is determined and the height of the overall height of the building is also determined. And actually we have reduced the overall height of the building by a foot by this revised uh, roof uh, design. So I would just like to make sure that we're not um, conflicting here in terms of what was approved and what is now required. So I just wanted to make sure that this condition uh, be removed from uh, the uh, approval. The other uh, contingency was that there will be a different material or color for the cladding brick so to distinguish the foundation. And I actually went back to the video of the last uh, hearing in 2014, and that topic was extensively discussed, and a motion was passed that the same brick could be used for the basement level. So I would like the commission to honor its uh, previous decision, and I would also like to have that paragraph uh, or that point two removed from the approval. Uh, we are working with staff on the masonry and the windows. Windows for the garage actually have been approved by the commission and what I would propose to use the same style and uh, material for the main house as has been approved for the garage. 
So I just wanted to make sure that we're kind of converging to a workable design what we can move forward with. Thank you. Okay, we may have some questions for you. So let me just be clear, I'm, uh, just to be sure we're doing what we're supposed to be doing here. So actually, the commission approved the, the original design, um, but the reason why we're seeing it today, or hearing it today, is because the preservation permit needed to be renewed. Right, it expired, and it was so long ago, and there was the change in the reform, we thought it best to bring back to you as a whole new project. Okay, just want to be really clear on that. Uh, commissioners, do you have any uh, concerns or questions about that? Just uh, back on the finished floor heights, I, are you saying that you're pretty sure you're not well, I was just trying to understand that that particular, um, once again, why you didn't feel like um, that you can meet that. Maybe I should say it that way. Uh, nothing has changed in terms of floor heights from a previous approved plan. Could I jump in? Do you mind? Yes. Yes. Um, as Mr. Hoffman said, that is a standard condition we always have. The foundation has been poured and has been approved by um, an inspector, and so there is no request for them to change the foundation. This is just a typical requirement that's in all of, almost all infill. Yeah, that's kind of where I was going. I didn't want to tank it off, and I was just curious, um, curious why you, that was a contention, but um, I, like Paul, okay, that's what I need to hear, I guess. Probably what you said, Robin. Okay, thanks. So, so I have a question on, on the windows. Are you saying that the windows that you have have the four to six inch mullion between the windows? Yeah. Well, at the moment in the garage, there, is, there are no two adjacent windows, but the windows what we would have, and this was a previous condition as well, will have the mullion between them, yes. So, so if you're meeting that, then is there a problem with keeping that condition? No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. In Let's reiterate this again. So you are asking us to remove the condition number two? Two and one. One and two. Yeah, because the floor heights are established and I'm wondering whether we need an additional approval. And say again the number two, your reasoning for not accepting that condition? The. The commission has approved for this type of construction that it is more appropriate to use one type of material, one type of brick for the entire house. And we can go back to look at, the, but the analogon was made uh, that it's like a layered cake without the icing, you know, that the icing should be kind of the uniform shell, the uniform appearance, and there should not be a delineation between the basement floor and subsequent floors. I'll just add that the, the approved uh, design had a brick um, soldier course uh, delineating the, the foundation line. Um, so, um, you know, if that's something that would be uh, appropriate in, in this case, I, I don't know, but it, you know, the, the condition was, was there just to differentiate that uh, in, in some way, just so that you know what was approved. Uh, so previously. you're saying it was a, it's the same brick, but just one course turned up? Yes, sir. Is that acceptable? Well, I, okay. Um, I would prefer if we won't have a requirement uh, to delineate the basement level from the subsequent levels. I think because if you look at the building, if you look from the front, the basement is not visible at all. And it is only visible from the left and the right side. And the right side is essentially covered by vegetation and the left side is only visible if you come up kind of to, to the street. So I'm not sure whether it would add um, conformity with the, um, the historic neighborhood. But that is part of a guideline. That's part of the design guideline. Correct, Paul? Number two is a, a that requirement is that's, that's a in guideline. the materials yes. section. Mm -hmm. So you, what you're asking us is not in 
congruent with the guideline? Well, asking for an right. potential. I just wanted to be really clear that that's what you're asking for. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Is that, was the guideline changed? Why was it approved in 2014 and not now? Has something changed? I'll, I'll jump in because I've been here a little bit longer. Um, it's something that, the, that we've always asked for um, because historically foundations did have a different material. There was that distinction. Um, you don't see it in some later, more suburban 70s, 80s kind of architecture, but you did historically see usually some sort of stone concrete foundation and then a change up above. Uh, commissions, you know, change over time and haven't always agreed. Certainly that hasn't been the case for commercial buildings. That doesn't, hasn't required the distinction. And so uh, there was that agreement to just change the coursing instead of changing the material, type, or color. Um, it's a new commission today, and up to you to decide what's what best fits in with the neighborhood. In the guidelines. Okay, thank you, applicant. We um, may ask you other questions. Um, open public hearing, close public hearing, discussions. Any comment on conditions one and two? I think, um, you know, with respect to condition one, I, I'll reiterate, I, I, I don't see the staff asking for something different than what has already been constructed as part of a previous um, application. This is a new application. Um, you know, the top of concrete or top of whatever was constructed is there now, and, and I, it, it sounds as if the applicant is going to construct on top of that as it is, and it's been inspected, but we don't know that, and, and I think it's, it's not perhaps adding some clarity that it is not the intent of the commission to require deconstruction of something that's already been approved, but certainly if the intent changes in the course of construction, and we have seen that, we've seen violation cases of that in the past, I think that certainly um, uh, removing that condition would paralyze the enforcement perhaps of where the finished floor is constructed. I, I'm not suggesting the applicant is wanting to do that, but absent of this condition, we may find ourselves in a position that you never know what's going to happen, I guess, is, is, is um, I, I don't think we want to ask the applicant to do think, something above and beyond what was previously um, approved uh, and what has been constructed, but certainly to remove um, a standard condition. I, I, I think everybody can win um, with, with that clarity added to condition number one. Do you remember anything about number two? You know, I, I don't remember anything about number two. I, I, I do know that um, it would be unusual to have a, a building, admittedly, in the front that's two stories, but in all other facades is, is essentially three stories that has no indication of a break between or, or designation between lower floors and upper floors. That would be very uncommon and certainly contrary to the guidelines. I'm, I'm not compelled by the architecture of the elevation submitted that it, in some way that there is a designation there that is visually apparent. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, will either of you make a motion? <laughs> We're not ready yet? Okay. <laughs> I guess right now I haven't heard a discussion much to um, go against what staff conditions are. Um, so um, you can bring it up later. But um, I make a motion that we approve. Oh, what is this one again? 2819 um, with uh, staff recommendations. There's a motion. Is there a second? Can I offer some clarity on one with respect to the motion? 
or say that additional again. commentary. Say that again, ben. Can I offer some additional commentary to item one to get, give the applicant, I think the- I think we might need a second before second. discussion continues. Yeah. I'll, I'll second. Okay, there's a second. All in favor of the motion. Um, or do we do discussion first? Do after? Do okay, all right, we'll do the discussion. Yeah, I, I, I wanna, with respect to item one, or condition one, uh, I just wanna clarify that there's existing construction in the field that's been inspected and according to the staff is, um, meets the intent of the guidelines to have, you know, not have houses sort of jumping out of the ground that are inconsistent with finished floors of adjacent homes and that um, through the course of the inspection of this application, as with all applications, it's not the intent that the applicant would, would change or have to lower or reduce what's already been constructed. Rob, there, okay, there's a second to that, okay. Um, let me just give a moment to staff. Is that clear on how we're giving directive? Okay, thank you. Um, all in favor of the motion? The, I mean, first. the first motion? Uh, first, we're going to approve his amendment. Okay, approve the amendment. Can we just do that all in one motion? No. Yeah? No. We'll all right. All right. To the first motion? To his amendment motion. Well, to was it amend an amendment or was it just additional clarification? I know, that's I thought it was just additional comment to the motion. I, I think some commentary maybe guidance to the okay. staff would be sufficient. And, so you and just have one? Inspector. Yeah, we just have one motion, one motion is what I was. Okay, my bad. Good? Yeah. Good. So we have one motion. There was an amendment to that, yeah, a, a commentary to the motion. So there's a second. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. There are none opposed, so the motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Um, we've closed public comment already, so. Okay, um, Robin, is there anything else on our agenda? Just Other wanted business? to remind you about the old house fair, March 2nd, um, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Severe Park Community Center. Still taking um, exhibitors, so if you know of anyone who should be there, just pass on that information or send me their contact information. Okay, thank you everyone, and we are adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.